I'm back. Welcome everyone to Ask Jen. I'm your host and your most honest homegirl, Jen. We are here on the Uprising Network, which was founded in Detroit. I'm a Detroiter. Most of my audience are Detroiters. Y'all know I love the city, so I thought my next guest is perfect. This city is important to me, and I want the viewers to know that their voices are being heard, so I decided to keep this conversation with someone who can keep it all the way P, okay? Pretty, presidential, and political. Okay, welcome to Ask Jen, Detroit City Council President. Mary Sheffield. What's up, Oprah of Detroit? Okay, <laughs> you, on missed, wax. you missed the title, Oprah of Detroit. I'm Oprah of Detroit. <laughs> I'm so uh, honored and excited to be here. I'm so happy to talk to you. I'm expecting us to have a really good, enriching conversation. I'm getting to know you. I want the audience to get to know you, too. And, of course, Detroit in this city and all of its glory is something that I am very proud of. So I'm trying to get people yes. outside of this to know a little bit more come visit Detroit yes. is fun it's full of black people we love you come on that's right that's right so everybody on the show play games okay you are not exempt I know you're the president <laughs> of the city council but you're not the president here I'm the boss okay hey okay I stole this game um I stole it from the Tyra show so okay. Tyra played this game with Beyonce and since you're the Beyonce of the city council mm. okay. I said it okay I think it's perfect for you right okay. Let's do it. So your name is Mary. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember the childhood game, Miss Mary. Mary yes. Mary, Mary. <laughs> so these categories will be based off of that game. Okay. I'm going to give you some questions and okay. you're going to have to answer them. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. So we got Miss Mary Mack. We already talked about we established that's a game. Miss Mary Snacks. What's your guilty pleasure food? Uh, I would probably say chocolate. Ooh. Yeah. Like just chocolate in general. Yep. What are some snacks you always keep in your city council chamber? Oh my gosh, peanuts! <laughs> nuts! I was gonna day. say like yep. you fit, you a healthy yeah, girl. Yeah. I, I always snack on nuts. You get your sure. protein yep. in. I like that. Yeah. So we gonna keep it in like the throwback lane. Okay. How do you think your teachers would describe you? Uh, outgoing. Um, I was definitely um very active in a lot of different things. I played every single sport. Wow. Growing up, literally everything. I tried everything. Um, I was, um, I was kind of popular, you know, I was definitely social. Okay. Um, and I think all of them look at me now and are not surprised that I'm where <laughs> I am, to be quite honest with you. Yeah. Okay. Fast forward, young Mary is all grown. It's 2013. Mm -hmm. You became the youngest yes. person ever appointed to city council. Elected. Elected. I just got to make sure you. <laughs> okay, let's say that. The people who chose me. The people chose me. You yes. better say that. Yes. You became the youngest person to ever be elected to city council. Mm -hmm. How did you feel on election night? Like, what was that for you? It was big. It was big because so many people counted me out. So, so many people told me that, you know, I was too young, that I couldn't do it. I mean, I believed in myself. My family believed in me. And I know the people believed in me, mm -hmm. but I knew that what I was doing was so big, not just for myself, but for generations to come to show young women that they don't have to wait for perfection. Mm -hmm. Just run, just do it, right? Done is better than perfect. And as you are pushing through, I guarantee all the things that are supposed to happen would align. So it was a moment I'll never forget. Tears in my eyes, my dad. I mean, everybody was thinking about the history of my family mm -hmm. and what it meant to us. Um, so it was big. It How did you moment. feel like once the election was called, like, were you relieved? Were you excited? Were you like, okay, I got a real hard job to do the next few Yeah, months. I was scared. I'm <laughs> like, okay, I got, I made it, but now I don't know what to expect. So I was very nervous at the very beginning. I didn't know anything about public office, nothing. I never, I mean, this was my first time being elected. So I was very scared. I was very nervous, but I knew that this is what I had been called to do. I know it's probably coming out in the interview, but you have a background in ministry. Yes, so I do. What moment in your like life made you propel? Like, I'm just not going to be a person organizing. I'm not going to be a person in the background. I'm going to put myself in the forefront to represent my I people. give a lot of credit to my father. I do. I give a lot of credit to my father because he really was like, you should run for office. Flat, flat out. Flat out. He was like, you should run for office. And he pushed me to do it. And then once I did it, I actually lost the first. I ran for state representative I when I was 20 three years old. I remember. I lost by 70 votes. Wow. And I was like, and it was 17. Y'all need to be voting. <laughs> 70 <laughs> votes is crazy. Y'all need to be 30, voting. Thank you. Come on. 70 votes. And it was 17 people in the race. I'll never forget it. And so 
Um, I thought my life was over. I'm like, oh my God, this is, you know, I was devastated. But um, that was the indication that I need to continue to move forward. I had got so close. And so it was my dad that kind of pushed me. And then once I ran, I started to really enjoy and love what I was doing. Oh, this is so yeah, exciting. Yeah. So you mentioned your dad before. You yeah. come from a legacy of community organizers. Your father mm -hmm. and grandfather are both prominent activists as yes. far as like human rights and civil rights. How has the work impacted you like as a leader? I believe we are shaped by our experiences, our exposure, and our environment. I always say that the three E's, that's what makes us who we are. And my father and my grandfather exposed me to so much around civil rights, social justice, helping the least of thee, helping give back to the homeless. I mean, just fighting for social justice. Mm -hmm. They were civil rights giants. And so it shaped me. A lot of my life, I honestly believe was ordained. It was just, it was, it was like I had no choice to do what I'm doing now. So it was a lot of my family that really shaped me. I love yeah. Shout out had to a you. huge impact on my life. Honey, yo, the family, keep it close. Like yes. you said, they shaped yes. those experiences. Yes. I think that's so important. Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but like, let's go back to it. So you came into city council at a point where like, you know, um, there was a distrust, like we could hear amongst citizens, like electing young black people yes. into office was, was a hard problem. You young, you black, and you're a woman. Being elected, yes. period, in Detroit is hard, but you've done it several times at this point. Yep. What do you think got you to earn the trust of like your constituents and people who vote for you? What I think people saw was my, my passion. I was consistent. Um, I continued to stand on what I believed. I told people my vision for the city. And I was out grinding. I knocked on doors every day. Mm. I spent hours in the community. People got to know me. Uh, they grew a, a, a sense of appreciation for me, and um, they believed that I was mature enough, I believe, to, to handle the position. And if I didn't know it all, I think they were able to see that she will learn it and she will represent us fine. So I'm glad that you mentioned like doing the work. One thing I can say, like when, especially like, you know, I had this platform and people like what separates me for everything else. I'm like, I work my butt off. Yes, you do. You can't ignore, but you cannot That's deny. Right. Once you start doing that work and people see you doing that work, it becomes impossible to say she can't walk yep. the walk. Yep. So you were talking about voting and knocking on doors and doing the work. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about voter apathy here yes. in Detroit. It's on the rise. So this past November, which was a major election year, there was a 30% drop in voter participation from 2018. Um, I wasn't on the ballot. That's why. <laughs> if they was on the ballot, y'all would have been voting. I had to say that. You man. bring them out. Period. I love bring them it. Out, bring them out. Like, no, I'm just playing. No, don't be okay. playing. <laughs> Voters have mentioned that they have absentee ballot issues. Um, they don't trust the electoral system. Mm -hmm. They just have an overall lack of enthusiasm about voting, which I could understand. Like, the I world is understand. just messed up. Yeah. But Detroit has not elected anybody younger since you've come into office. How do you think we can reinvigorate like the younger voter like base and get them to not only elect younger people into office, but just vote as a whole? Yeah, I think that some of the voter apathy I always say some of it, is, of course, is government. And we got to do a better job at delivering for people so that they understand the correlation between their vote. Do your job. You know, so we do have to do better. But secondly, we got to have good candidates. Like, I mean, people was wrapped around the polling booths when Obama was there. Let's talk about it. people were excited that it, he was an inspirational leader. So we need more leaders, more young people to run for office who actually excite young people to want to vote. So some of it, you know, we always point our, our, our finger to voters. It's their fault. They're not coming out. But some of it is like we need good candidates. Like who who's going to run that excites us, right? So we got to get more qualified competent, exciting people to run for office to get us out and ready to vote. If you are competent, <laughs> exciting, and young, come on down to Detroit. We need you. We need more. We need younger people just running yeah. in general, not just in Detroit, but we everywhere. Need more. And it's not just for political office. It's board, just commissions. There's so many different levels that people can serve that they don't even know actually impacts them. Board of Education, our school system. Right, we need people, young people running for those positions as well. I love it. Yep. Oh, you so you excite me too. I okay. want to vote for you right now. Okay. 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 Detroiters, we love telling folks to tap in and <laughs> House President. Yes. You be telling people to tap in. I love yes. watching your social media posts. Yes. First of all, whoever run your social, good job. Shout out to Kayla Rice.
You be telling the folks to tap in. So when it comes to community work, what do tapping in look like to you? Tap mm-hmm. in is like get connected. There we like go. listen, it's tons of resources available in the city. I sit every day and I have to read it. I have to approve it. And it's like it's there's no reason for some people not to be taking advantage of the opportunities from a business pers- uh, perspective to just individuals who have been struggling with property taxes, water assistance. I mean, there's so many resources available. Entrepreneurs who want to start a business, who want to get a brick and mo- a motor lo- location. There's there's just so many opportunities. So tap in is my way of saying, let's get connected to these information and these resources that help improve your quality of life. Okay. Well, I'm about there to tap go. in with you right now. What's a secret or a policy or a program that's going on right now that you feel like more Detroiters should be tapping in with, but they not? Down payment assistance. Right now, if you want to buy your first home, Get twenty five thousand dollars grant cash. Cash grant, into, not loan. No cash grant for your down payment, right? So that's a program we just launched. I heard it was a lot of people applying, but it's it's very important because it gives you an opportunity, of course, to begin generational wealth for your family. And a lot of young people need that extra cash for their down payment assistance. Mm-hmm. So I would say the down payment assistance program is one. Um, secondly, Motor City Match. Everyone who's an entrepreneur should know about Motor City Match. If you're trying to find a, a actual location, a physical location for your business, they will match you with open commercial space that's available. Um, or if you just have an idea and you're just trying to figure out how to strategize, how do I bring this idea to fruition? I want to be an entrepreneur. They will pair you with somebody to actually bring those visions it. to fruition. But like you just mentioned, connecting people with resources, yeah. the one thing I really just appreciate about your politics and how you carry yourself as president is you are always meeting people where they are. We just yes. see just so often politicians specifically like feel like they above the law or like their job really isn't to serve people. They there to yeah. serve their own best interests. We see that, you know, in the past president, <laughs> I see what meetings, conferences, business openings, networking events. Listen, tapping in and being aware of the, what's going on in the community, yes. connecting with people. Why is that so important to you? Because that's what I wanted to be when I got elected. I'm like, we don't see this. No, I don't see myself in any politicians. And I want to just be real. I want to be authentic. I still want to not lose who I am, you know, and always keep the pulse of the community because they, they're the ones that put you in office. And we get comfortable once we get elected Hello? sitting behind the desk and just doing all of the day-to-day. And I understand because it can get overwhelming. But people want accessibility and be able to touch their uh, elected officials so that, you know, it just feels more real. So that's just who I am. Okay, so listen, we cannot mention your connection to people without talking about you in the music industry. <laughs> you are tapping in. First of all, I've seen you in a T Grizzly music video. I've oh seen you in God. pictures with Big Sean, Cash Doll, Vezo. Can you say the music industry has helped propel Detroit's renaissance? I know people feel like Detroit mm-hmm. is coming back. Detroit ain't went nowhere. But how do you feel the right. music industry is helping push Detroit to the forefront? I mean, our our talent is fire in Detroit, and we are, I think, finally getting the recognition that we deserve um, from an artistic standpoint. So speaking of the music industry, we're going to play another game. Are you ready? This is Motown, first and foremost. This is Motown. We are all naturally music lovers and tied in with music. Um, I played this game with Mia Ray, another Detroit woman, icon. Shout out to Mia Ray. Shout out to Mia. I haven't worked with you yet, Mia. I'm waiting. (laughs) <laughs> Put that on the camera. Mia, how you don't work with me but not the city yes. council president? You got to tap in, girl. Yes, we yes. waiting for you. you. I'm excited to work with She her. needs to name yes. a Mary bag. We got. Yes. Ma- we need a Mary bag. Yeah. Yes, yes. So this game is called Personality Playlist, okay? Okay. For this game, I want you to come up with a playlist based on things about your personality. These are things I know about you by scrolling your social media and <gasps> reading multiple bios about you because I does my research. I know you do. I love it. You work out daily and wake up early. What is a song that gets you energized in the morning? Um, it's funny because I really don't listen to music in the morning. Do you listen to like podcasts or like motivational? Yeah, things? that's my morning. Ooh, what's your favorite podcast? Yeah. Um, I listen to a lot of like um Miles Monroe in the morning. I listen to um uh Tony Robbins, Joe Dispenza, um T D J. Okay. Uh, it depends. That's you know, a, it depends that, on my mood. Those are great. But I got to get in the set of like getting me, you know, I'm, I'm all on my purpose, my purpose journey. Something you play before you go into a council meeting. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it, it really depends, you know. 
<laughs> All I do is win, win, win. No matter if I got an ordinance for something, uh-huh. you know, it's like no. But it, it really depends. Okay. It depends on the move. I gotta hype myself up. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I play gospel. I have played hip hop. It really depends on the move. It depends on. I yeah. really like the yeah. all I do is yeah. win. I'm around with that. I definitely group. have used that because you be winning. Yes, yes. We all win. We all win. When you are feeling down and defeated and want to uplift your spirits, always gospel. Kira Shear, I love her to death. Uh, she, Another Detroit girl. Her, oh, Detroit girl. She's coming perform for me. But Kira always when she sings, it's some her ministry touches me. It uplifts me. When you come home and want to unwind after a long day, what you saying? Actually, now it's interesting that you ask that. I'm starting to listen to a little jazz. That yes. is real. I feel like jazz is a very like grown yes. genre of music. I'm not going to lie because the music sometimes can be overwhelming. I agree. The, the lyrics. And now I actually played it coming back from a trip. I was at the airport and people was getting on my nerve and I just happened to click on some jazz music. And I'm like, dang, nobody can make me mad listening to jazz. Like, nothing can upset me. Do you know what's funny? So, like, when I was younger and we would be, I, first of all, I have seven brothers and two sisters. I have a very big family. Uh-huh. When we would be in a car fighting, like, on a long road trip or coming off, my daddy would put on smooth jazz. <laughs> B98.7. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Detroit, yes. and we would be quiet, and we would fall asleep, That's and that was said. that was his that was his life hack for all of us. Okay. Our, in our I bad want your behavior. listeners to go put on some jazz, and I guarantee you, you cannot be in a bad mood. I guarantee you. Challenge <laughs> accepted. Y'all heard her. Okay, you yes. are a Detroit girl to yes. your core. What Detroit song make you feel the bossiest? Ah, oh, so many. It's I'm so like, many. I don't even know where to start. I would say first day out, T Grizzly, some Big Sean. Um, going back, K K D Z. Um, was it Joy Rowe coming off the free? There like, we hey, go. Hey, a woman of the people. Some cash down. Some cash down. Some run me my come money. On, we need to pass these on. ordinances. We need to get people yes, their tax dollars back. Yes, run me my money. Yes. Where do we start? It's so many. I mean, I can't even go back to Big Hurt. There we go. You don't know about oh, Big Hurt. You, I know about okay. Big Hurt. You got you some taste <laughs> on you. I wasn't expecting yes, none of this. Yes, yes, yes. It, depend, it really depends. You a Detroit woman for sure. Okay. Boss up and Boss get this money. Up. All of that. Yeah. I, I, it's all of Detroit music gives me feeling a certain way because that's, that's us. That's our culture. It's our spirit. So I love Detroit. I it love make you want to get up and get some money, get yep. up and get something done. If you <laughs> are a lazy done. person, if you, some days you don't want to get up off your butt, listen to some payroll. Yes. I promise you, you're going to have $20,000 by the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> payroll make you want to get up. I love it. You talking about Detroit and all the artists that we have here. We're going to talk a little bit about resident retention. Okay. Okay. We about to switch gears. So this topic is close to me because I've lost some friends just due to people feeling like they can't find opportunity here in Detroit. They've moved elsewhere. Um, Detroit and Wayne County as a whole is facing a significant net loss of younger, productive workers. People who live in Detroit say they can't live here. Taxes is too high. There's no public transport and people cannot afford rent in homes in Detroit. Is there a retention plan to keep residents from moving elsewhere to receive better opportunities? I need my friends to stay home. I know. I think everything that we do or I do um, on the council is geared towards keeping people in Detroit. We want to attract, but we want to retain generational Detroiters, those who have been here. So, I mean, you, you nailed it. I mean, property taxes is something that I'm actually working on trying to reduce at a state level, how we reduce property taxes. The crime, I'm at the forefront of how do we make this city safe. We have kids, babies, you know, dying day in and day out to gun violence. is ridiculous. So we got to continue to create uh, a safe city. Uh, then our educational school system is important as well, too. I mean, all of the things that you need to keep a family in Detroit are the things that we continue to work on. And we have to have more opportunities from a jobs perspective, too, because a lot of young people leave. They leave because there's more opportunities. So um, there are a lot of jobs, though, in Detroit. I think there's over 4,000 jobs right now that are just open, vacant in Detroit in various sectors that people are just not connecting to. Mm-hmm. Um, in the skilled trades, people who don't want to go to college, I mean, there's tons of jobs in that as well. So everything that I do is, is, is really geared towards not only attracting but retaining we appreciate you so yeah. much. I feel like, if and if I'm wrong, correct me, Detroit's image to the rest of the world, I feel like it's improved over the, oh, the past sure. couple of years. Oh, for sure. And people respect Detroit. Where you, wherever you go, 
If I say I'm from Detroit, it's like a whole nother, oh, you know. <laughs> I I'm love it. Indeed. I actually love yeah, it, Yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a different level of respect we get. I still feel like people get a lot wrong about Detroiters. What is, I have a few audience members who are not from the city. What is something that you want everybody not from Detroit to know about us after watching this interview? Something that I want people to know about Detroiters? Mm -hmm. And that we resilient. I mean, that we're authentic, man. We created a lot of the, the culture in this world. Flat out. I mean, techno came from here. Hip, a lot of hip hop, Motown came from here. So we, we are uh, innovators, right? And so, um, it just it's no, there's no other people like Detroit. Recently, a statistic came out saying Detroit was no longer the blackest city in the U.S. It is now Memphis by just under 700 residents. Just like you lost by just those 70 votes, it's only 700 residents keeping us from being the blackest city in the U.S. What do you think has caused this? So you mentioned already, I mean, people, unfortunately, are leaving the city, um, going to Southfield in the suburbs or moving elsewhere. Um, a lot of times they either can't afford, you know, some of the increasing prices that are happening within different neighborhoods in the city or just there's no opportunity. With that being said, you know, right now we're challenging the census because people oft oftentimes don't fill out the census. Mm -hmm. And so there's black people in the city who probably are not being counted. Oh, yeah. So I still say we are the blackest city. In this country. The president said it. All right. The president <laughs> said it. They're not counting the census. They, we, we just got to get more people also to fill out the census. And I'm not sure if you've been hearing about it, but we are challenging uh, the current count numbers. That's good to hear. Yeah. That yeah. is good to hear. Like, the, our status in this country is really important. Like you said, Detroit are culture exporters. Yes. Our existence is really important to how the world moves. Knowing that this is the blackest city on earth is really important to me. That is a fact. I love that telling people important. out of town, we can't me lose too. it. Do you feel like the movement of outsiders into the city i know especially like in 2020 like during the pandemic when people was working from everywhere detroit had a slight influx in in population do you think all of those people moving in have anything to do with black people being moved out of the city i think that I, so gentrification yeah right in let's general, say the big g right, word gentrification. that's a big word I mean, for elmo I, mean, I do i do think it is happening you know i do think that people are not being able to afford the cost of living in certain areas and they are moving because mm -hmm. it's more convenient. I mean, you can go to Southfield or or a suburb and get better schools. It's safer and it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. So people are moving. Um, but I do think that there's enough opportunity for people to stay in the city. Thank you so much. Yes. You do a lot for people who stay in Detroit. You mentioned this earlier, but you are the leader of the reparations task force. You have been in the forefront of advocating for affordable housing. I've seen you at the breaking ground of several yes. and the opening of many. Yes. Um, Detroit has gotten very expensive <laughs> to live in in the last decade. It seems like more and more people who were born and raised in the city are being pushed out. And you said, what is being done about the equitable housing? You mentioned the down payment assistance. You mentioned trying to lower the taxes. Yes. Everything that I do is about housing. So I created the first ever inclusionary housing ordinance, which, I, as I mentioned earlier, all new developments, 20% has to be affordable. I created a housing trust fund, the city's first ever trust fund, where oh, that's money goes into a fund that is dedicated solely to affordable housing, very, very low housing. I'm talking about rents probably no higher than $600 a month. Um, as well. Uh, we mentioned the down payment assistance program, um, but I, I, I want to focus on shifting the conversation because we always have to provide affordable housing, mm -hmm. but we also have to get to a point where we're creating opportunities to lift people there we out go. of their Let's situations talk about it. Yeah. to be able to afford quality housing. You know what I'm saying? You want people to be able to afford market rate. And so I think it has to be an equal conversation. Uh, I'm, I'm a fighter for, sure. for and an advocate for affordable housing. But, I, I, you know, I'm really trying to change my perspective to, like, why are people living in poverty? Why are, why people can't afford Hello? market rate in these very expensive units? We want people, black people, to be able to afford Hello? those Hello, we things. need to be making money. Yes. Like I, I hate to say this because I'm like, this is my <laughs> capitalist coming out. But I'm yeah. like, why can't people just make more money? We need opportunities to make more money. Like yes. you said, yes, affordable housing is really important. But why do people have to go for affordable housing? Why we can't create people's lives that... Thank they you. can just afford housing. Thank it does you. not have to be affordable. Yep. But I do believe that it's the responsibility of government to provide a, an adequate amount of quality affordable housing for those who can't afford it. But just as much as we push for affordable mm -hmm. housing, we have to push for economic opportunities for Detroiters, lifting people upward social mobility so that people can afford these. You're so passionate. Assets. I yes. love I love hearing you talk. Yeah, because we don't I mean we are smart, capable people. 
right? We just got to find it within our, ourselves to be able to afford and to do the things that I know we can. All right. So All right, gonna, power. We're going to live. We're going to keep this conversation going. So yes. we said Detroit is faced hefty city taxes. Mm -hmm. Like, and I feel like the city sometimes favors developers over taxpayers simply because developers like get a lot of tax breaks to be able to come in the city and do these things. Do you really feel like a tax break is an investment into the city? It is. It is. The issue with tax abatements is, are they delivering on their promises? There we go. Are they actually providing the job that they promise or the economic return that they promise? But I've sat on council now for 10 years, and I do know that incentives and tax breaks are needed for projects to work. But again, it's, you know, what are you doing for the community? If we're going to give you this, if we're going to invest in your project, how are Detroit is going to benefit? What's my return on my investment? And you don't play about the return on no, investment. No, I don't play on the return. We gonna, cause we gonna talk about that a little bit now. <laughs> nope. Developers rely on these city tax breaks, like yes. you said, to invest in Detroit. This spring, city council approved a key development incentive for the proposed 1.5 billion With district Detroit project. You were the only city council member who opposed. Yes. So thank you for standing up for Detroiters. Yes. What made you stand your ground against your colleagues and counterparts? That return on the investment. And we, you said, I'm not seeing the bees. Yeah, it, it, you know, for me, I wanted to challenge the conversation and push the narrative because there was nothing in writing that guaranteed that Detroiters would have jobs on, on uh, post-construction post -construction jobs. There was nothing guaranteed that Detroit businesses would benefit from that $1.5 billion uh, development. And so I wanted clear language. I wanted it in writing. You know, we can make all of these promises, but if there's no guarantee in writing, that Detroit-based businesses have access to this, then what are we approving it for? What are we approving it right? for? Right. So I just fought for stronger language, you know, in the in the agreement that would ensure that Detroit-based businesses have access to uh, that huge project. Because uh, some of this is like, if I'm investing in you, I want to create a pipeline of other people who can do the same thing. How can we can't have black billionaires developing as well? So we got to be intentional when these billionaires do come before us. Like, what are you going to do for our people? Right? And so... I didn't get the language that I wanted in that agreement. I, I'm for the project, but I just didn't get the language and the guarantees that I believe was best for Detroiters. Also, and it's like, if you are using our space and building on us and saying yeah. that you want to help our citizens, why is the language not there? Like, why is that something that was not already in existence? they've done it for so long, existence? and it's like, I don't, we don't have to. We don't have to. <laughs> and you see, we still have that, some of the, you know, highest poverty rate in the country amongst black people. I mean, that's because we're not requiring when these projects, I mean, but you look at downtown thriving. Mm -hmm. Why are we not benefiting? Because we got to keep fighting to get that stuff guaranteed and, and, and actually clear language in these agreements. And that's important to me. I think that is so important. Yeah. And I'm glad that you highlighted it. Cause I'm like, it kind of looked like you were being, I should have like, she the only one who said no. I, like, I just want clarity. Listen, you give me a billion dollars. I just want you to tell I me how you're going to make it to me. I want clarity and I want some guarantees. So we talk about city equity and occupancy, but we can't talk about this without addressing the violence. You mentioned like you want to make the city a safer place yes. for everyone. And I know that's a priority of yours. I see it through the work that you do. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, first, I want to thank you for voting against the implementation of the unreliable, racist, and right infringing shot spider technology. Oh, look at you and your research. Okay. But Detroit, just like the rest of the U.S., it's a gun problem like everywhere. Like it's not a Detroit thing. Right, it's not a city urban. thing. It is a national thing. Yep. Pe kids are getting shot in the suburbs. People are using their parents' own guns to harm them. Like mm -hmm. guns are a problem all over this country. Yeah. How do you think violence can be addressed here in Detroit without discriminatory or over-policing practices? You got to address the root, the root cause. And I, that, you know, my approach has always been policing has its part, it plays its role, but you got to have the other side, and that's addressing the root causes, mental health, education, access to resources, et cetera. And so I always have tried to tackle gun violence from the root cause and connecting people with resources and opportunity um, that I believe actually, you know, just it, it eliminates the violence from, a, not from a policing standpoint, we do need police, but attacking it from the root cause. I think that's so important. Yeah. Like you said, there's, there's so many steps in between the acts actually happening, being able to catch it yep. at the front, like you said, yep. resources, education, knowledge. is really important. So to combat this, you have your amazing initiative. For people yes. who do not know, what is Occupy the Corner? 
Occupy the Corner is our uh, community resource and engagement event. It's the biggest signature event of the summer that we do every single year where we have like 20, 30 vendors out. We always have a lineup of Detroit artists and we're connecting people with resources. We're celebrating life in a safe way um, and just making sure that people come out and are connecting with city government, registering people to vote. We having a good time listening to music, promoting our Detroit artists. Um, while also making sure that people are civically engaged. So, and then our finale is going to be in August with Big Sean. Yeah. Every year we do it with him as well. I love this. Mm-hmm. Consistency. Okay, T, I'll see you soon because I'm pulling up. <laughs> Safety is, like, really important to me. Like, I have, I mentioned to you before, I have a daughter, I have a family. I, we grew up in Detroit. So, like, feeling hey. safe in neighborhoods is really important to me. I be out. I, I get gas at 2 o'clock in the morning. I want it to be safe for me. Like, I don't want that to have to be a problem. So, I appreciate you prioritizing that. Yes. So you answer tough questions from people all the time. Being city council president, you live where you work. Your neighbors are your constituents and your friends vote for you. (laughs) With your two worlds being so intertwined, how do you prioritize self-care and protect your mental health with such a demanding job? I mean, it's a non-negotiable. Like You just have to. Because when I don't, it affects the people that I serve, my team, um, how I show up. And um, it's actually funny, now more than ever at this point in my life, it is like top of my list, like for real, like just prioritizing myself, you know, eating right, pausing, you know, taking, because you can't pour from an empty cup. And if I don't feel right, I'm not, I'm not delivering my purpose the way I'm supposed to. And you've been doing this for a long time. I'm like, you know, being in office at 26, not the same as being in in his 30. It 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 hit different. You got it. It hit different. It hit (laughs) new. You got to prioritize that (laughs) self-care. How do you take care of yourself when you are always in the spotlight? Like, do you duck off? I know you mentioned, like, you travel a little bit. Yeah, that's my thing. Because, you know, in Detroit, all eyes on you. You can't really let loose like that. Everybody got something to say. Was that press conference president? Mm -hmm. And it's not like I go away and act crazy, but I can just, no one knows me. No one knows who I am. You think nobody knows who you are? Is when you the out most of part, they don't. Oh, but I was in New York with Kayla. Though. There they, we were, go. they was fine to me. Oh, that's is you the president of the council. So, um, but I like to get away, you know, just to get away, clear my mind. I travel a lot by myself. I just came back from Sedona. Uh, I did like a five day trip there by myself. Did you so, do spas? Uh-uh, I hiked. I hiked. Ooh. And um, you just, was an active yeah, ran, lady. I like yeah. that. I, I'm a huge advocate for people traveling by themselves. And um, even if you're a relationship, non relationship, but just taking that, that time to get to know you. Um, because the more I, I understand who I am, the greater I am um, and what I do just in life. So you inspire so many women like myself, of course. We appreciate you being a true champion and supporter of women looking to make a difference in the city. Your presence is always known and we appreciate you. So this is your camera right here. OK, I want you to look in this camera. Tell us a woman in your life who you want to give their flowers and tell my viewers why they inspire you. Oh, it's so many women. Pick, you only got to pick one. I, my show only so long. It's just me. <laughs> I'm going to give Ask Jen her flowers on her show because I've been watching you too. And I actually can see you um, on a national oh my platform. Like, And I, when I said Detroit's Oprah, we were actually in my office and she tried to kind of wanted to go over some of the questions. I'm like, no, no, no. But she gave me like two of them. And I'm like, she is a good interviewer. You know, you don't run into a lot of people that actually know how to interview you and allow you to open up and feel comfortable. It's an art. And so I'm giving you your flowers on your show because I've been watching you. Oh, my God. I am a supporter and fan of you. Oh, my God. And I do have something special coming up for you. I didn't want to do it here on the show. I'm going to wait to your live show and do it. But just the fact that you've reached out to me and allowed me to grace myself on your in your space um, and what you're doing for Detroit is huge. So I want to give you your flowers. I can't take this. I wasn't <laughs> expecting so long. I'm about to scream. You Are you telling me I have to finish this interview? <laughs> None of what you do can be done without grassroots community engagement. If there was someone looking to get more active mm-hmm. and support their community a little more, get more engaged, help grow the city help the city look prosperous, like you said, that economic development, that safety. If somebody wants to get involved, what can they do right now? So, number one, connect with me. You know, tap in tap with in. Council President Sheffield. We got tons of information and resources, and if you connect with our office, you'll get tons of updates on city events, resources, etc. Also, depending on where you live, uh, there is a city council representative in your district. 
So you can reach out to that person as well to make sure you're connected with them as well. Um, I always say make sure your block club or your block has a block club um, because there's benefits to be organized. Uh, and when you're organized, there's tons of resources that you could tap into as well. So if you're not a part of a block club, start one or join the one that you're with. Thank you so much. Yes, Something yes. we like to do on my show when I have guests is we like to call it motivational minute. Like I appreciate all of your careful responses today. And I Thank know there you. are people watching this show who have gone through tough times or have a tough job just like you and just need a little bit more motivation. Can you motivate the people? Yeah. I'm going to give you three topics. Oh, I'm going to okay. give you three topics and then you're going to say your, your motivational okay. speech. You ready? Okay, yes. A young woman wanting to run for office. Do it. Do it. You know, don't worry about having it all together and second guessing yourself and thinking that there's going to be a time where everything is going to be perfect. You'll never find that moment. And so I would just say do it um, because there is no such thing as failure, right? You always learn something from whatever happened. So I would just say, um, you know, learn as much as you can about whatever office you're going to run for. Uh, find what issues you're passionate about because that helps drive you as you run. Um, but just don't think, don't let perfection, you know, stop you. Because we oftentimes are just waiting for this perfect moment that never is going to come. I ran with fear, right? I ran with still doubts in my head, not thinking that I was capable or able, but I still did it. And look at me now. Look at you now. A person who has to make difficult decisions daily. Intuition. You know, I'm learning so much about intuition and your gut. Because when you make difficult decisions, a lot of times there's competing interests. There's different people telling you to do certain things. And... The times where I've been able to sleep at night is when I follow my gut and my intuition. So knowing your intuition. Know yourself. Yeah. You sound like me. You need to come on Ask Jen and answer some of these <laughs> questions. Someone with a job. This one is about me. I uh -oh, asked this uh -oh. specifically. Someone with a job that requires them to always be in the spotlight. You know, just your impressions matter. You know, I'm learning that too. Like people are always looking and, and judging a little bit. Um, being kind and courteous to everyone. Um, but always showing up as your true self. <laughs> okay. That is all the questions we have. Thank you so much for But I wanted time. to go back to the misconception. Let's talk I about the misconception. Just one thing, because yeah. I, I didn't want to leave it out there. I think sometimes the misconception is they don't really understand what we do or the impact that we have. But when you open up your door and you go out, council has a part of everything that you see from your grass being cut, garbage being picked up, the police that are out here in our com in our communities, the, the house next to you that's trying to get demolished. That's all council. Another thing, if you have not watched a city council meeting ever, yeah. you need you some entertaining. Watch you one of them. It's not as entertaining anymore. Baby. <laughs> they used to be. They used to be. Uh, during the pandemic, yeah. city council meetings was keeping me afloat. That, that was entertaining. Tayman, before we leave, can I ask you one more question? Yeah. Why the parking ticket so high? Listen, okay, I'll just plug the Detroit resident discount program that I've approved. So okay. if you get a parking ticket, a um, expired meter parking ticket, you can get a 50% reduction if you pay it within five days. Five days. Yeah. I need to get that money by tomorrow so okay. I can get the discount. Y'all just park. Do, do what you need to do, though. Put the money in a meter and make sure you gone when it's, you know, it's expired. But thank you, uh, Ask Jen. I, I appreciate you. I love discussing things that matter with the people who can actually make it happen. I appreciate you coming on my platform today. And this is not the last time you're going to see her again. She said she got something for me upcoming Yay. at my live show. So, of course, you all are going to see City Council President Mary Sheffield again soon. But that's all we have with Ask Jen for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, visit Detroit. We love you. Bye. Bye.